Welcome back to the stratosphere. And yeah, I don't really know where to start. I suppose I could start by cleaning the wheels. Yes, the more observant among you may have noticed I've turned it round. Mm. It does run, just not for very far, I'm guessing, with no alternator connected. And it's the turnaround rhization of the vehicle, um, so I can get access to this side where all that kerfuffle is going on. But there's no need to get involved with that just yet because I've got the parts, I've got the belt, everything else. Um, I think Mike's going to get that to me. So I'm going to amuse myself with some other little bits and pieces that I wanted to get done once it came home anyway. Things in the prettification department. Well, I bought these a while back um, from some chap in the UK. And um, as you can see, they're way too bloody big. I mean, yeah, no. Doesn't fit there, does it? Yeah. Same with these. Too large. Unless Lister Bell have done a quarter scale car or something. Um, <laughs> half scale, whatever. Yeah. That ain't gonna work. More disappointment. Now what? I know. Yes, yeah, the stickers I made, um, which are also slightly too big, but that's not a problem because I'm going to cut them out. Um, so yeah, 0.75 is the actual width of the switch. There we have them. Well, I think we're gonna go with the plain white, slightly more legible icons. We can all agree they're a slight improvement. So cutting them out with a scalpel and then using that scalpel to transport them to the vehicle. Uh, always cutting um, on the edge of the ruler of the bit that you're going to discard so that if the knife slips, you don't muller what you want. Well, whilst I admired Mike's creativity, there's little post-it notes. I think they're an infinite improvement on the whole situation. I may uh, revise them after a while. We'll see. Um, I might actually do something that actually fits the whole button and has the wording as well. But quite pleased with them. Not that you can see any of the labels from the driving seat anyway, um, so you just kind of have to know where they are. Uh, just like my old TVR Griffith, no labels on it at all. Purely for the benefit of the passenger, really. So these, the Stratos, um, I was thinking, um, by the way, I have a EPS AI file for this, if anyone needs it for cutout stickers, um, just uh, email me or something. Um, I recreated it, yeah. Um, I was singing on the black back spoiler. Uh, I don't know. I've already got that, right? Do I need that as well? I don't know. Maybe. Well, before uh, we get down to the serious stuff, I thought I'd just check out the cat proof cover. And um, that fits rather nicely, I have to say. Can't remember who I got it from. Um... Susie's Doggy's Delights? No, I don't think so. Um, uh, yeah, these guys. Uh, those guys. Carcover.com. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, very good. Nice quality. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, waterproof as well. Not that I obviously need that in here, but it fits all right. I've seen worse. And um, actually, the best cover I had was for my Corvette C6. That fit like a glove. Um, anyway, does the job. I know, not the most exciting video, is it? Mm. And the good thing about cats is that there won't be any rats or mice in here to um, do any wiring like we've had on the Maserati and the FJ. It's outside. Anyway, brief interlude. Uh, fixing shelves for the missus. Cliche though, there it is. is the leftovers. Look, look, yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, talking of uh, brief diversions, um, much as I love that crazy American Bel Air, um, it's lovely to have a load of room, isn't it? I mean, look, the car's in and I can get to my bench. And I know, yeah, that's going, unfortunately. Um, and look, we can just walk around here. I've literally gained like six foot either at least easily well, it's not surprising because it's a very small car 
was better. It's a very big car. So, yeah. And that's why I bought it. Uh, not the Stratos because it's small, the Bel Air because it's just a ridiculously large American car and I've always wanted one. Uh, anyway, I digress again. Well, it's a good job we got a car cover, isn't it? Mr. Simps is checking out the situation. He knows there needs to be some attention to the rear end. Well, gloves are off. Uh, I mean, the covers are off. And um, Chuck's coming over on Sunday to help me with the Bel Air. Uh, I need to get these parts ordered, so I need to show Mikey exactly what the damage is. So, uh, yes, we need to get this cover off as well, uh, because, uh, as you've seen on previous videos, that wasn't installed, or we, we uninstalled it while we were fitting things and testing things and what have you. And then, of course, now it's in place, and uh, we need to get behind it again. So uh, I shall be getting that off right now. Very easy, um, as you can see, just some Allen bolts. And it will just peel out, hopefully. And then while we got everything open, I'm going to do a little bit of tidying up of electrics and things. Although it looks like Mikey's had a bit of a go at doing just that. But Six is... bolts removed and put in the handy little nut and bolt holders in the chassis. <laughs> yeah, very handy. Uh, there we go. Now that should just pull off. I Not think. so fast, sunshine. Um, there's another one here, and there was one there, and there's another couple down here. So uh, they're going to be harder to get to, but whatever. Aha! So it's actually two pieces, so it probably would have been better to take the back one off first um, so that this wasn't loose, because there's only the, uh, the two there and the two there that hold that one in. Now it's all kind of a uh, bit of a jigsaw puzzle. Well, there's one belt hanging on by the skin of its teeth. The remains of it or another, I'm not sure. I don't see any belts. So I think we were bloody lucky they didn't overheat. We had some kind of water pump going. So here's some stuff I can be getting on with. Um, I'm going to loosen off this terminal on the coil because this wire, this one, rooted all kind of weird and round the bloody gear shift cables down here yeah I mean what the hell so I'm gonna root it with these green boys and um, start cladding stuff up with my uh, protective skeletal cladding that uh, you'll be familiar with if you watch any of my motorcycle videos and if you haven't I suggest you do of course I'm getting help not allowed to sit on this car. Ah, one down, 10 million to Shift go. up as far as um, here. And uh, I'm gonna have to get the side panel off to tidy up all this stuff. Yeah. Lot of tidying to do. Lot of possible rerouting. Oh, there's just wires everywhere. No, don't worry, I'm not gonna film it all because it's boring, right? And yes, Mr. Sansom, I did cut off all the bits of the tie wraps to tidy it up after I'd finished. And yeah, look, there's relays just dangling around. Lots of them. So I need to work out something to mount them to, um, or in, so they're a little bit more secure. Testing, I think, is kind of over. I'm thinking sticking something to the side of the fuel tank, actually because that's where they all seem to want to rest. There's three down there, if you can see them. Um, yeah. Not sure if that was supposed to be connected, but it wasn't. I think it's the reverse. Yes, line. indeedy. A lot of fun and games with wiring to be had. Look at it. Really? Wow. And talking of tedious jobs, there's one wheel cleaned up. That only took 20 minutes. Anyway, it's a lot better. These brakes certainly give off a lot of dust. Especially as I hardly use them. Turns out it's a good job I made lots of spare ones of these um, because there'll be very handy labels for some of the wiring that I'm discovering um, as I'm tidying things up. Uh, yeah, because um, this was all wrapped up in a big old coil up here. And uh, it's basically the sensor, these two, 
uh, the uh, sensor for to kick in the fans and we've just got them on a manual switch um, because <laughs> so uh, so I can uh, I can chop these short and potentially uh, label them up just in case and uh, likewise with this this is uh, the evaporating the evap solenoid um, which as you can see is not um, I'm not going to chop that because those connections are good and decent and then this down here is a constant live which again we can chop short just to keep it neat and tidy yeah uh, constant I think that's what it says not constable um yeah so yes I mean that's looking tidier already isn't it well that's because it's all out here but we're going to get rid of it all because we're not using it but we're going to label it just in case we want to use it later well nice idea but uh, I think this is going to work better so positive and negative well that's all getting a little bit neater so we're as far back as the transmission and we've got everything clad and well put on that down there um everything kind of rerouted as well do that earth to uh, reroute the big positive gable um but yeah we're getting there so stage two no no i said i wasn't going to film it well i'm not filming it i'm just showing you what i've done oh, i think i deserve some cake Like, thank God this stuff is lightweight, or otherwise I would have added twenty pounds worth of cladding. Colin Chapman will be turning in his grave. Well, I think I've located the uh, troublesome speedo sensor at least. Well, Chuck came over, and we have uh, successfully replaced the hinge on the Bel Air. Just the one. Um, quite a performance. Wasn't going to video it because it involves these torsion bars. Uh, this one in particular and uh, that took quite a lot of effort to get that back into its slot but we did it and as you can see the trunk stays open all by itself and it shuts all by itself I know I said I wasn't going to film it um, this is for my own reference so down there there are two relays. The black one is for the injectors, and the not so black one is for the fuel pump. And I don't know what that one's for. This one here. Anyway, we definitely need to find some way of tidying those up a little. But as you can see, we are beginning to tidy wiring. Painful. Well, this may be a little over the top, but <laughs> this is the uh, wire to the starter motor, which uh, kind of, well, I'll show you. Yeah, it goes in there, next to all that heat, all those exhaust pipes and everything else. Um, and yeah, Mikey had it rooted kind of over the top of the transmission. And yeah, anyway, I'm gonna route it along this sway bar at the back. And hence the, protection so this is actually a little bit of fuel line that I had for a Honda CT70 and um, so I've cut that so that it's gonna just hold it in a nice curve away from the pipes and of course double protect it because of the skin um, nice female connector on there with one of those melty rubber jobbies just to seal that all in as well so yeah I mean super protection um, yeah, quite the condom. Um, and then join that up to Mikey's original wire and sheath that with some normal stuff. So, yeah. So, there you have it. See, strapped to the roll bar there and up into the starter there. I like that. And the final leg. Um, I'm going to be using bullets, I know. Don't normally use bullets. Yes, here's how I prepared earlier. Uh, oh no, wrong bullets. Anyway, need some strippers. Not those kind of strippers. These kind of strippers. 
Well, I changed my mind and reverted to type and used one of my favourite melty things. Um, so now I just need to put the sleeve on and that's kind of a job done. And it's a lot tidier. I mean, it might not look it, but it is. And everything's protected. Yep, I think we can call that job done. And I'm much happier about this situation uh, than that single little wire just dangling in there, unprotected. Yeah, good. All right, so that means we need to look at the real problem. I know, I've been putting it off. Um, so, yeah, Dr. Chuck was here this morning um, helping me fix the bow there, as you know. And um, there's, we're pretty sure there's definitely two bolts two belts two belts uh involved and um the good news is you can't see um <laughs> the good news is i can take that nut off are you reckon that one uh if i can off the alternator to free those straggly bits of wiring you see that bit there yeah um and get all that gump out of the way at least without wrecking the alternator so let's try that so i've been putting it off <laughs> well i also wanted some advice and um chuck is quite the advisor so um yeah let's give it a go see what happens yes let's shed some light on the situation there you go um so that nut there but see it spins i mean yeah, half of you are saying, well, yeah, do um, It spins with the wheel. So this is an Allen thing. So I guess what I need to do... God, this is going to be a nightmare. Uh, I guess what I need to do is hold that and then undo the nut off that. That's going to be fun. If only Chuck was still here to help. Or honestly, just anyone that knew what they were doing. Well, if you ever want to know, it's a number eight hex. Yes, number eight. And of course, just slightly bigger than a 19. Yes, which I haven't got. Uh, but it does seem to be a seven eighths. Hmm. I don't know what the metric equivalent is. Probably a 20. Anyway, if the hat fits, wear it. Um, yes, need a clown hat at this point, probably. Well, I can't shift it. Yeah, even with a little bit of extra purchase on it, which we used on the Bel Air this morning, actually. Um, it's just not happening. And I don't know anything about alternators, so I don't really want to break it. Uh, but it doesn't seem to want to undo. Maybe it goes the other way. I don't know. Um, maybe I'm tightening it. Either way, it ain't coming off. Well, that's that side buttoned up. Uh, not so easy with the wheel on. Um, but uh, nevertheless, it's done. So yeah, there's two bolts down there, and there's two in there. Yeah. So it's a little bit tricky, but that's it. Yeah, six bolts and it's on. Good. <sighs> Meantime, none the wiser. Hmm. Or uh, don't know where to start. So let's move on to the next easy fix, which should be an easy fix. Because apparently it's probably just the washer that's too big that's blocking this going up the full way. That's as far as it shuts at the moment. Um, so let's explore that. But not today, because I've had enough in every way. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, let's look at that tomorrow. There's a couple of boys that need a walk. It'll do me good to clear my head. And on that note, I think we'll call it a day. So thanks as always for watching. Uh, do subscribe if you haven't already. Give the video the thumbs up. Wish me luck. And uh, we'll tackle that door and that alternator situation next episode. So do tune in again. And of course, I encourage others to watch my lunacy.